G'day folks, welcome to another exciting episode of Learn to Paint TV. Rod Moore here with you from Moore Art School and of course Learn to Paint TV. Now this week we're going to do a nice little seascape scene. I was down at Coolum Beach on the Sunshine Coast uh, a couple of weeks ago I guess. It was a beautiful sunny day and I took a, uh, a fairly broad panoramic sort of uh, photo of the headland there and I thought we'd have a go at that today. It's a, it's a pretty simple painting. You can put in a lot of detail to this one if you want to but you could also leave it without a huge amount of detail. So I'm going to start off with step one. I've got a, a uh, it looks like a 12 by 16 inch canvas and I've got my ultramarine blue paint and my alizarin crimson. We'll mix those two together, get plenty of paint there and we'll use that for our drawing as we always do. I always like to start my drawing with a nice mauvey dark and as we always do, use plenty of water in the drawing step. Um, we don't want those lines going on too thick and heavy. Now, whenever you're painting a seascape, I always find uh, it's important to establish where the horizon is. The photo, which I'll put up on the screen, um, is a little bit deceptive because it's, it's quite a, uh, what do you call that, movie screen shape rather than this shape of the camera. So I need to adjust what I'm doing to the canvas. I'm going to add in um, extra sky up here. Okay, So I've got to really think about my canvas as being an inch or two below the real level of it. So always finding our horizon, um, you know, the horizon here is going to run somewhere around about there, through there. And then the headland, part of the reason why I like this composition, the headland then comes down at a fairly sharp angle and it comes down below the uh, horizon line. Now I think that's probably, I might not bring that over. I've got a lot of headland to, to fit in, but I'll ignore that line and we'll just run that in there to about there. And then we've got this rocky outcrop here, which is uh, kind of lit up and a little bit more there. Lit up in the late afternoon sunlight and then there's some rocks into the sand there. So it goes to there, this water line, then run back that way. So there's not a huge amount of water, but there's some crashing waves. It was a fairly wild old day when I was down there. So we've got some crashing waves in there. Okay. So it's all about getting big shapes in when you do your drawing. You don't want to be drawing a masterpiece here. Uh, you just want to place shapes. And obviously this headland is one of those bigger shapes. There's some interesting trees sitting up in there. Some other rocks that are less prominent in there. Now, normally when I do a sky, I like to start it off blue and get it much lighter by the time we get to the horizon, as you've no doubt seen. But in this one, we're going to not have such a gradient. We're going to use a deeper blue, which means that this headland through here is going to be probably a bit darker than what we might have normally painted it. So I just need to keep that in mind. Mix that together. Okay. And it's on the blue side, which I think is probably not a bad thing because the sun's setting over here, over behind the headland, which is what's making it quite dark. And it's also what that would mean was that it's going to make it a, uh, a slightly cooler dark as well. So a bit bluer won't be a problem, I don't think. Okay, run that up there some trees and things so I can just tap the brush over that line to create some interesting tree effects. Up there. Run some of those. I think there's like some pine tree type things there. I'll just indicate them. We'll come back and we'll pop those in as details later on. Uh, but for now we'll just indicate them. And then I've got this rock here and this one here that are in uh, kind of a um, highlight. So I'm going to push that dark a little bit warmer for there. Okay. I'll work it in there. Okay. Pretty simple so far. I'm sure you'd agree that there's nothing I'm doing here that's too difficult for beginners. The important thing is, again, shapes and values is the most important thing to getting this to work. So now I'll take more red and I'll mix that red into that 
dark. So we're still going to dark. It's just it's going to be a bit of a warmer dark. Okay, we'll run that in there. And then we'll run a little bit into that rock there. And we'll shape these up with the highlights. And then we'll run some of that into this rock here, which is more in the foreground. And probably should be our warmest dark. So I just added a little touch more red in there to get that extra warmth in there. So I'm not going to be doing an underpaint and then highlight over it. Um, I'll just do one pass. So it's important that I don't have too much water in the brush for this and that I um, use plenty of paint so the paint flows. Now I've got plenty of paint out, so that's not a problem. I'll just take that as I mix it. I'll just get just a you know, tiny little bit of white in there just to ease it back a little bit, okay? Remember that acrylic paint tends to dry a little bit darker. So it's always handy to know that. In fact, I'm thinking that's too dark. I'm, I'm going to take more white into that mix. So I can just see what's going to happen is that that's, if I was too close to that tube color, it will just dry way too dark. Okay. And that could be just a touch of light. So let me just keep mixing. You know what, I think that might work. Got a fair bit of paint up there. You can see how much paint's in the brush, okay? Don't be uh, stingy with your paint at this stage. And as always with the skies, always paint them in bands, especially if I want to get a gradient. Now, we're not going to go for a gradient here, uh, but it's still not a bad practice just to paint in bands so that you can do the next band slightly lighter if you need to, which I'm going to do because I'm... <laughs> I'm really concerned that's going to just end up being too light or too dark. So um, we keep it right at the top there. Maybe not a problem. Definitely want to get a little bit lighter. Nowhere near the gradient that we'd normally use. Uh, however, let's just try that. And I'll just run that up to the edge of the previous band. Now, the, the key to this is using plenty of paint. If I had thin amounts of paint, then it would dry and I wouldn't be able to just blend it together like I've done there. That's the trick with acrylics, is to get to understand the drying properties of the acrylics that you're using in the environment that you're using. Now, it's very hot here in Queensland and um, the garage here where I have my studio set up can get hot quite quickly. Which means the paint dries off quickly. So I'm just putting my yellows up. My yellow ochre, which is my earthier yellow, and then my cadmium yellow light the brighter yellow, okay? And as we come forward, we'll use more of that brighter yellow. So we'll just take some of the ultramarine blue there, a little tiny bit of the yellow ochre into it. Does tend to make it go a bit murky looking, and a little tiny bit of the white. Okay. And as you, that's an example of what I mean by murky looking. So what I'll do is I'll just add more blue back into that. Okay, so it's a darker blue. And it's going to run in there. So I just did that with one brush stroke, running that across. I had wet paint there. I could, I should have really pulled that wet paint out. Just with a paper towel would have been a good idea. Um, but I figure that this is just the blocking. I can always touch this up. Um, you know, the next step. But for the moment, we'll just get the paint. Down. Not real thrilled about that being such a hard line there. So I might put some clouds or some splashing water or something up over just to break that line later on. I won't do that now, but certainly later on I think that might be an idea. Now getting a little bit more of the CAD 
yellow, which is going to give us a nicer green through there. You could use a phthalo blues and greens if you wanted to get a bit more fancy, but because I you know, try and do these videos for beginners, I think it's helpful to just use a limited palette. So I'll stick with just our few colors that we use. And you know, depending on where you live, what ocean you go and visit, usually the water gets greener as it gets closer to the shore. That's because the, the water gets shallower, you know, and then the sand is, if it's clear water like we have up here on the Sunshine Coast, the sand is closer to the water surface. And so the combination of the blue reflecting from the sky and the yellow pushing up from the uh, sand is what gives you the greenness. Now, I've taken my alizarin crimson. I'm just going to always refer to it as, as alizarin crimson, right? Because in oil painting, that's what it's called. Um, and my yellow ochre, just going to mix them together. Okay, mostly on the yellow side. Big chunks of paint. See that? Okay, and then we're just going to run that into the blocking for the sand. And that could even double up as our wet sand component as well. We'll see. Not making any promises at this stage, but we'll see. Now, I'm doing this randomly, you know, like I'm, all I want to do is just get this warm, earthy sand tone down onto the canvas. That's my only objective here. I'm not trying to make it look like sand or anything like that. Use the opportunity though to shape the water. See how I just push the sand up a bit just to reduce the overall size of that water there. And a little bit of sand in front of this rock formation. pretty much all we need at this stage. Let's have a break and uh, I'll see you after the break for step three. See you then. Okay, welcome back folks. We're now stepping into step number three in the more method of painting, which is all about our details and our highlights, finishing touches and so on. So we've made a pretty good start in our first uh, two sections here. I think that's all gone well, it's all pretty dry. And we've got a nice balance of tones, a lot stronger, richer colors than what we have done in other paintings in the past. And I think this one will come together nicely as a good little beginner seascape um, project and definitely one to have a go at. So now we need to start uh, building up some detail and some layers. I'm gonna, I, I think I'll start with this water here. We'll put in some work into the water, then we'll go into the headlands, rocks, and then sand. So let's start to build that up. And then I'll come back I'll get some white and some blue. And this will be the shadowier, lighter tone of the waves, the foam of the waves. And let us just Very subtle, soft hand, which I didn't really have, but <laughs> I tried to have. Um, where else can we get some of that? We'll just get a little bit of splashing up water there. And then I'm not going to do too many waves and things in here. Um, keep it reasonably simple. 
a good uh, Australian artist by the name of Barry told me to underplay the water rather than trying to capture it all in. You'll find it easier. And I do tend to agree with him. Okay, so quite subtle there at the moment. I'm going to build this water up in layers. Just getting some of those rocks around the base there. And what I'll do is I'll just take a slightly warmer version of that green. Just find some of the treetops. Just so we can indicate a source of light there. Probably a little bit too light there, maybe. But if it is, when it dries back, I'll um, I'll turn it back. That's no problem. Painting is a series of adjustments. I think. Yellow ochre and the alizarin crimson. I picked them both up on the brush there. Pop that separate, mix that in. We want an earthy orange. Okay, so I might even add a bit of the cadmium yellow light into that. Okay. So there it is there. So we're going to go for three, three different tones. We've got our dark already there, and then we need to then just introduce you know a mid-tone, which is this tone here. Don't lose it in the sand. Because it is very much like our sandy color there at the moment. In fact, I'll leave that one until I get the sand around it. Now I'll take a swipe of white and we'll just pop that in the corner. So it's a softy, orangey, pink tone. And let's just pick out some highlights. Kind of feels a little bit out of balance at the moment. I think part of the reason why is we need to get the sand color in. So that'll give us a nice light patch through here. Let's do that. There's our yellow ochre. Take a chunk of the yellow ochre, big swipe of the white, bring the two together. And the sand is getting lots of sun. So it's a nice light tone like so. We need to leave a patch for the wet sand, I believe. And I'm gonna just use big, big um, brush marks here, except for this little bit of fiddly around the rocks. Okay. Nice thick paint is what I'm going for. I'm not afraid to let some of that undertone come through because there will be shadowy parts of the uh, of the sand, obviously. OK, 
kids have built, you know, sandcastle and dug a hole. What's going to show up as a, as a shadow or a dark when you're looking from a distance? You want the general direction of it to come that way so that the eye runs up the sand and into the picture though. So that's important. Just slightly darker as it gets closer to me. It's a bluey grey, a light bluey grey, and up in this area where it's a bit darker here, I'm just going to put in. Just one or two marks like so, and then I'll soften it with my finger. Don't do that if you're using oils. Use a soft brush. And then maybe it needs one or two of those up here as well to balance it. Well, folks, I think we've come to the end of this uh, good little demonstration of Coolum Beach on a you know, very bright sunny day. The sun over in the distance, got this really strong blue sky, much stronger than what we'd normally do it, which is part of the reason why I wanted to have a go at this one. Got this dark headland with a little bit of light getting through and then the light catching on these rocks, some crashing waves and um, some nice bright warm sand there. It's a good little seascape painting. Um, it's a little bit different from the photo purely because of the dimensions. I had to just uh, remodel a little bit, which often you need to do with photos. But I think this is a good little exercise in doing a seascape, um, getting a feel for how to paint the water and the sky and everything. And it's, you know, it's one I'd have a go at as a beginner if you're interested in learning to paint beach scenes and seascapes and so on. Um, we will do some more advanced ones down the track. Um, but last week and this week, I just wanted to bring things back to basics a little bit and uh, just reinforce some of the fundamentals. So I hope you've enjoyed this one. Make sure you drop by our website at www.learntopaint.tv and uh, check out all the other episodes there. And if you like this video, then please like it, share, comment, and do all those good things we'd greatly appreciate it. Check out our More Art School Facebook page as well. If you're not a member there, we've got a growing community of people um, on our Facebook page, so check out More Art School. We'd love to see you there. Until next time on Learn to Paint TV, happy painting, and I'll see you next week.